Okay, in this video, I'm going to go through uh, the cover page just to make sure that you're good at that. And then I'm going to also go over the homework for 4.1 and teach 4.2. So that's what's going on. Okay, so for number one, if the angle is um, 115 degrees, you should have written that that is obtuse. Let me just turn this on. So this should be obtuse. Next one should be right. This is acute. Four is obtuse. Okay? So there's no straight angles there. Solve the um, equation. So we, are all, we always need to be able to do this no matter what math course you're taking. So I would subtract 70, subtract 70, that gives me 2y equals 110, divide by 2, divide by 2, and that's going to give me y is 55. Okay, for number 6, it says, I'll change color so you have a contrast, 2x equals 5x minus 54. So I'm going to add 54 to both sides. So now I have 54 plus 2x equals 5x. I'm going to get into the way of number 7 here, but subtract 2x from each side. That's going to give me 54 equals 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and x will equal 18. Okay, for number 7, um, the problem is... 40 plus x plus 65 equals 180. That's 105 plus x equals 180. Subtract 105, subtract 105. So therefore, x immediately is going to equal 75. So one thing I'm going to point out is on this left side of the equation, these are like terms. Don't change the sign, just add them. Okay, coming down to number eight, find the coordinates of the midpoint. So what you should do to find the coordinates <clears throat> is to do the following. So I have two plus a negative one over two will be my x, and negative five minus two over two will be my y. So this will be one half, and this will be negative seven halves. And for nine, I have negative 4 plus 1 over 2, comma, 7 minus 5 over 2, negative 3 halves, comma, 1 is my point, that's my midpoint, and what I'm doing is I'm using this formula for everything, number 10, number 10 is kind of unique, but you're going to follow the formula, so I'm going to say h plus h over 2, and k plus 0 over 2, h plus h is just 2h over 2, the 2's cancel, and k plus 0 is just k over 2, so we don't have numbers, but we still have a representation, let me write that better, a representation of the midpoint. It's going to be h over, h comma k over 2. Okay, so taking us down to 11, Explain whether the angles are congruent, and I say they're congruent because they are vertical. 12, they are congruent because they're corresponding. For 13, they're congruent because they are alternate interior. And for 14, they are not congruent because there is no relationship that we know of between these. It doesn't fall into one of our categories. Okay, so we did this for notes the other day, so you should have these notes. And what else do I see now? <coughs> okay, so then we want to look at the 4.1 homework. And the 4.1 homework asks us to match the triangle description with the most specific name. So if you have angle measurements of 30, 60, 90, the second I see a 90, 
I think right triangle. So that's going to be a C. Side lengths of 2, 2, and 2. All the side lengths are the same. Therefore, the side sides are the same. It's going to be E. Angle measurements. Ooh, all the angle measurements are the same. It's going to be equiangular. So that's going to be F. Side lengths. I see I have two the same. That makes for isosceles. Keep going. Side lengths of 5, 7, 9. Ooh, they're all different. So that's scalene. Angle measurements of 20, 125. That's a big boy. That's going to make for an obtuse triangle. Can a right triangle also be obtuse? Explain why or why not. So let's think about this. Here is a right triangle. Okay, that has 90 degrees. How many degrees are left? So this plus this guy. So one star plus two stars have to equal 90 combined. So can it be obtuse? No. Um, because... 180 degrees equals a triangle, and 90 degrees removes 90 from the 180. Um, obtuse angle would be too big. Okay, so that's why it's a no. Classify the sides, the triangle by its sides and by its angles. So you have to do both. So this guy is going to be a right. That's by the angles. Isosceles by the sides. Um, this one's going to be all the angles are acute. And we also know they're also all the same. But we're just going to go with acute for right now. Acute equilateral. Now, given that we already know that they're going to all be the same, I would also say that I would take equiangular and equilateral. Okay, so there's no marks anywhere, but what I can see is that this angle is obtuse. So that is obtuse <clears throat> without any marks. I know the size must all be different, so it's obtuse and scalene. Okay, so in terms of by the sides, side statements are isosceles, equilateral, and scalene. In terms of by the angles, angle statements are right, acute or equiangular, and obtuse. Make sure you can distinguish between the two. Okay, next thing. This is a coordinate plane, and they give you the points. So let's go ahead and plot. So everything's in this first quadrant. So don't forget that these are your x's comes first and then y's. So this is going to be 2 and then 3 up. That's point A. B is 6 across and 3 up. That's point B. And C is 2 across and 7 up. Okay, so let's graph the triangle and classify it by its sides and then determine if it is a right triangle. Okay, so what about its sides? If you count um, from 2 to 6, this is 4. If you count from 3 to 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, this is also 4. Okay, I know this is a right triangle because these two lines uh, cross each other vertically. So if I'm going to classify this, it's going to be a right isosceles. All right, so that's what I would have you do for that. Okay, continuing with the homework that you should have already posted. Find angle measurements. So if you know you have 180 degrees and you take 60 away, that's 120, and you take another 60 away, that's 60. So therefore, X has to be 60 degrees. Okay, next one, looking at this, 
Um, what do I know? I know that 3x plus x plus 60 equals 180. Combine like terms, 4x plus 60 equals 180. Subtract 60, divide, subtract 60. 4x equals 120. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals 30. And we're done. Okay. And then they also want, once we find the answer, they want us to classify the triangles by its angles. So I'm going to first find all the answers, and then we'll go back. Okay. So I need to figure out this guy, kind of, maybe. Do I really? No. Because this is exterior. So I know, because of the exterior sum theorem, that x degrees equals 64 plus 70, because these are remote angles. And I know that the remote angles add up together to get my exterior. So 64 and 70 is 134. <coughs> so right here, I have 134 degrees. I can figure out what this question, what this arrow is, because 180 minus 134, since they're a linear pair, gives me 46. Okay, so now I have all of my angles. Okay, let's go back and classify these. So if I have all the same angles, this is equiangular. Um, if I have x is 30, let's do some investigation. This is 30. Oh, this is 90. So in terms of classifying by the angles, this is a right triangle. Okay, and finding all of these angles was helpful because now I know that this triangle is acute when classified by its angles. So you should have both of these answers. Find the measure of the exterior angle shown. Okay, so here are your exterior angles. That's exterior. This is exterior. And that is exterior. Okay, so what do I know? I know that the sum of the remote equals the exterior. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, and rewrite. 45 equals x minus 2. Add 2, add 2, 47 equals x. That's what x is, but I need to figure out what the exterior angle is. So I'm going to say 2 times 47 minus 2, using that formula, is going to equal my exterior angle. So 2 times 45 is what? So 2 times 7 is 14, then the 4 carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 is 9, minus 2. That's going to give me 92 degrees for my exterior. So I'm going to say, let me just um, erase this big old circle, and I'm going to say this equals 92. Well, I also know what this equals, right? So I'm also put that down just for completion. That equals 47. Okay, let's do the next one. Same idea, uh, the sum of the remotes equals the exterior angle. Get used to that. Okay, these are like terms. Add those together. So 4 and 8 is 12, and then the 2 carry the 1. That's 42 plus 2x equals 3x plus 6. Okay, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. That's going to give me 36 plus 2x equals 3x. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x, 36 equals x. So that's good, but that doesn't give me the exterior yet. So I have to use this to get my exterior. So 3 times 36 plus 6 equals my exterior angle. 3 times 36, 3 sixes are 18, so the 8 carry the 1. 3 threes are 9, and 1 is 10, plus 6. That's going to equal my exterior angle. Add those guys together. You get 114 equals your exterior angle. Done. Okay, so this angle right here is 114 degrees. Okay, last one. 
let's change my color. So this is interesting, what's going on here? I have a right triangle. I'm gonna use the same method, um, but I'm gonna remember this is 90. So I need 90 plus 3x plus two. That's going to equal this angle one. Okay, so I don't know what that is. So what do I have now? I have 92 plus 3x equals some angle one. But I'm kind of stuck because I can't really solve it that way. So let's put that on hold for a second and let's look and see what I'm going to do. Can't I say that there's 180 degrees in the triangle? That's going to equal 90 plus x plus 3x plus 2, <coughs> excuse me, subtract 90 from both sides. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add like terms. That's 92 plus 4x equals 180. Subtract 92 from both sides. And that's going to give me 88. 88 equals 4x divided by 4 and I'm getting x equals 22. Okay, does that help me? Oh yeah, that'll definitely help me. So let's go back up now. We're gonna return this and put it up here, okay? So 92 plus three times 22 equals angle one. So let me continue this up here. So 92 plus 3 times 22 is 66. That has to equal angle 1. This is 8. Um, this is 15. So it looks to me like angle 1 is 158 degrees. And that's my exterior angle. Okay, so that was a tough one. So I'm going to start this one. If you got this one, you should pat yourself on the back because you had to do a lot of thinking. If you didn't get it, see if you can now go through it and get it on your own without having to look at what I just did. Okay, next step up. We're going to do the notes. Okay, so here come your notes. Congruent figures, um, all the parts of one figure are congruent to the corresponding, and that's gonna be a new concept for us, corresponding parts I didn't leave myself enough room here. Parts of, continue down here, the other figure. Okay, what does that mean? That means that if, for example, if this triangle is congruent to this triangle, then all the corresponding parts, so this is a corresponding part, that's a corresponding part, that's a corresponding part, and the angles will also be equal. So let me just not make that mark, but let's do two here, two here, one here, one here. So if you know the, these triangles are corresponding, excuse me, are congruent, then you can figure out that every part of each shape is congruent to that same corresponding part of the other shape. That's what's going on there. Okay, the third angle theorem comes in handy. It says, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. Doesn't that make sense? So if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, so let's say we have this situation. If this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, wouldn't it mean that this has to also be congruent to this because you have 180 degrees in each one. So that's how that works out. Okay, so then we have some, some properties here. So reflexive properties 
just means that self equals self. So if you have same equals same. So we're not going to use these a lot, but look, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. Same equals same. Symmetric properties are this. Whenever you think symmetric, think two things. So think two. If ABC is congruent to DEF, then DEF has to be congruent to ABC. Think two, and I'm going to say switch order. And the last thing is if you have three. So when you think of transitive, I want you to think three. Okay, so if ABC equals triangle DEF, and DEF equals JKL, then isn't ABC going to equal JKL? So let's avoid the letters because it gets confusing. So if triangle 1 is congruent to triangle 2, and triangle 2 is congruent to triangle 3, wouldn't it make sense that triangle 1 has to be triangle has to be congruent at triangle three because look what they have in common they have this in common so therefore you can say that all right okay so then we have some examples of this so let's go through the examples so it says um write a congruence statement for the triangles identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Okay, so they gave us the solution for this. Let's make sure this makes sense. So they are saying JKL. So J has three hash marks. So does T. Look at the hash marks inside the angles. T has three. K has one. So does S, and L has two, and so does R. So those triangles are congruent. If you have the same angles, I'm going to say I have the same sides based on all of these markings. So do you see that JK is the first pair? JK has a single. TS is my first pair. TS has a single, KL is my second grouping, KL has a double, SR is my second, double, and then triple and triple. So if you were to list them out, this is what you would do. You would say, each of these angles, here are your angles, here are your sides. So now let's try one of these. What if I give you this triangle, and I'm going to call this A, B, C, and I tell you that it is congruent to another triangle that is Q, R, T. And I put all kinds of markings on it. Here's a mark, that's good, that's a single, that's a single, here's a triple, here's a triple. <coughs> what I'm seeing now, AB, well, we'll start, I guess we'll start at AC. So let's start here. That has to equal that, and this has to equal this, and this has to equal this. So can you write a statement to make these triangles equal? Yes, I can say ABC is congruent, do the same order, QRT. Then I can say angle A is congruent to angle Q, angle B is congruent to angle R, and angle C is congruent to angle T. Next, I know that AB 
that's a line segment, so I put my little line symbol, is congruent to what? QR, and I know that BC is congruent to RT, and then lastly, I'm going to say AC is congruent to QT. So look at all my notation. Notation is important. So that's an example of how you're identifying a statement connecting the two shapes, triangles in this situation. Based on that, I can now assign angles to be equal and sides to be equal. Okay, so then they say, use the properties of congruency in these figures. So what do I know? If they tell me that DE, FG, so it's going to go, it's going to start here, DE, and then I'm going to go to F, and then to G. That is congruent. Oh, look, this is going differently, so I have to be very careful. Look at the other one. It's SP. Start here. This is my first thing. SP, SP, and then to Q, and then to R. Okay, find the values of X and Y. All right, so this is a little bit trickier because what do I know? I know that this side, DE, this is going to equal SP. Okay, that doesn't help me out any. And then I know that EF, this is going to equal PQ. Okay, what else do I know? I know that, so I have EF, I'm going to go to FG next. FG is going to equal QR. QR is where? Here. Now maybe we're working out. So what do I see right there? That 12 is going to equal 2x minus 4. Add 4, add 4. That's 16 equals 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And x is going to equal 8. Okay, so I've gotten x. Now I had to figure out y as well. So I'm going to look at the angles now. So angle Q is going to be equal to what angle? Well, look, angle Q is here, so that must equal angle F. Well, angle F is 68. 68 equals 2x minus 4. Add 4, add 4, 72. Oh, wait, I lost my head. Let me go back. Let me not do that at all. Because what did I do incorrectly? I set a side equal to an angle. That was very, very bad. Okay. So 68 degrees equals 6y plus x. Oh, I have two unknowns. Oh, but I've already solved for my x, which is what I had, what I had to do first. So 68 equals 6y plus 8. Subtract, subtract. 60 equals 6y. Divide, divide. y equals 10. I now have both. So x was 8 and y was 10. Go back over that if you need more help with that. Okay? All right. Now, what's happening here? You've got this girl painting. And if she's painting, it says, show that the figures are congruent. You may assume that the top of the rectangle is parallel to the bottom. Oh. So if this guy is parallel to that guy, don't I then know that angle 1 equals angle 4 because they're alternate interior, and angle 2 equals angle 3? So what do I now know? Looks like I have everything lined up except for JK. Well, JK is in common to both. So the reflexive property lets us say JK equals itself. So I'm going to put two hash marks here. 
So will these shapes be the same? And you can say yes, because based on what I just did, with the alternate interior angles and with the side in common, I can now say what? I can say that A, and this is a rectangle, so A, J, K, D is congruent to what? I'm going to start out with the C, because C is a right angle, and it's on the shorter side. So I went, I went this way, A, J, K, D. So I have to do the same thing. A, J equals C, K. So I'm going to go C, K, J, D. Okay, so look at how I did that. That's going to probably be a source of confusion for you initially. But I had to make sure that my sides were equal. So do I see that A, J equals C, K? Yep, they both have a single. How about J, K? J, K is in common. Oh, there it is. K, J means the same. And the last one, K, D. K, D is a double. And J, B is a double. So it works in terms of sides. Now let's check the angles. Does angle A equal angle C? Yes. Does angle J equal angle K? And when I say angle K, I mean K on this side. So that's three. Okay, because J in this situation is angle one, and K in this situation refers to angle, uh, angle four, excuse me. And what about K? K in this situation refers to what? So K is going to be angle three, and J in this situation is going to be angle two. Okay, and then D is a 90 and B is a 90. Okay, so let me do this for you. A, J, K, D. That is the beige triangle. Okay, so that's the beige sorry, rectangle. The other one is the blue one. All right, so look at that. You may have to need to think about that a little bit. Okay, use the third angle theorem to figure this stuff out. So they want me to find B, D, C. B, D, C. So that's interesting. What is that? That's this angle right here. It's not just the 30 degrees. It's the whole angle. So I think the easiest way to do this is to pull out B, D, C. Okay, see what I just did? This is B, D, C. And what do I know about that? Well, if this is 45 here, then this has to be 45. So can we play around a little bit? If this is 30 and this is 30, what else do I know? And this is 45. Can I figure out other things? That's 60. This has to be 120. If that's 120 and this is a linear pair, remember our linear pairs, that means this is 60 and these are vertical. That's 60. Okay, can I figure out what this is now? So if that's 60, 60 and 45 is 105. So what does this other angle have to be? So 180 minus 105 is 75. So what I figured out is that this guy is 75. Okay, if that guy is 75, what's this big guy? That big guy is 30 plus 75 or 105. So this equals 105. So how did I use the third angle theorem? Well, I had one angle. Um, so say I had the two 30s, I found the 120. 
I then used my knowledge of linear pairs and vertical angles to get the two 60s. Then I knew that these were 45. So this is also going to be 75, but I didn't really need that one because I'm looking only at angle D or angle BDC, which is that big guy. So I had to use a lot of my old stuff to be able to get my new stuff established. Okay, here's another thing. Example one. Okay, so this is what I have to do. So this should be up here. So let's just uh, talk about it like that. So write a congruent statement for the triangle shown. Identify all pairs of corresponding parts. Okay, match up your angles. I'm going to call this triangle X, Z, Y. That's going to be congruent, match up your angles, with N, okay, Z is 3, so P comes next. Um, y is double, so is M, that's good. Okay, given that, this is my congruency statement, congruency statement, very important. What are my angles? So my angles are going to be angle X is congruent to angle N, angle Z is congruent to angle P, angle Y is congruent to angle M. So notice I'm not looking back at the picture. I am looking at this statement. This statement's guiding me now. Let's do the sides. The first XZ has to be congruent to NP, and ZY is congruent to PM, and then XY is congruent to NM. Okay, I went around that triangle. I can look at the hash marks or I can use the statement to get it. Okay, we have a couple of other practices, two more things to practice, and then three more things to practice, and then this is going to be the homework right here. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So that's in the diagram ABCD is congruent to FGHK. So ABCD, okay, so that means that this is congruent to that, that's FG. And then BC, this guy is congruent to GH. And CD is next. Okay, so the orientation is the same for both of these. Okay, so I have that. Okay, so what do I need to figure out? Find the value of X and K. Excuse me, X and Y. Okay, this has only X in it, so I'm going to find that first. So 9, right, equals 3x minus 6. Add 6, add 6. 15 equals 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals 5. Okay, so that's done. Um, now, let's see what we have next. This one has an x and a y in it. So what do we know about that? We have to figure that out. Okay, so this one uh, pertains to this angle. So this angle is 44. So I know that 44 equals 4x plus 2y. So 44 equals 4 times 5 plus 2y. 44 equals 20 plus 2y. Minus 20, minus 20, 24 equals 2y, divide by 2, divide by 2, 12 equals y. So we've got both. Okay, here comes another one. Maggie took a piece of fabric, show in the diagram and cut it in the diagonal to make a scarf for her and a friend. Are the two pieces the same size and shape? So let's see. What do we know? Oh, look at this. This is a piece in common, right? 
So if this is a right angle, that's a right angle, that's a right angle. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, if this is a rectangle, then that means that this guy and this guy are parallel. So that means that alternate interior angles are equal. And now everything is the same. So what I can definitely say is that S V U is congruent to start out with the angle four U and then where am I going next T S and that should line up correctly. So those are the same size, uh, size and shape. And how come? Um, I had some parallel lines. I had alternate um, interior angles are congruent. That was going on. And I had the reflexive piece, which was the piece in common to both, which is SU, reflexive piece. Okay, example four. Find this measure of YXW. Y, X, W. So I need this big boy angle. Okay, let's do the same thing we just did before. This is 35. So that's 70. This has to be 180 altogether. So that must be 110. If that's 110, then this has to be 70 because those angles are a linear pair. This is 70 also because they're vertical. So what's the missing angle here? Well, 70 and 40 is 110, so that angle has to be what? Figure it out. It looks like it has to be 70. So if this is 70, that's going to be 70. Now, is that true? Hold on a second. I have 180 minus 70, which would be 110, right? And then minus 40, which would be what? Yeah, 70. Okay, so 70 and 70 is 140 and 40, yes. So then what is angle YXW? YXW is this guy. So that's going to equal 70 plus 35 equals 105. Done. Okay, so now use this information to do the homework on this page, okay? And we're done. So I'll post this for you. Do this homework. It's due by the start of next class.